It's an hour on titrations and Wayne's wearing a hat. Wayne, why, why are you wearing a hat? Well, I, I had a haircut the other day and I don't really want the viewers to see it. It's a little oh. bit embarrassing. Why are you right? Why am I wearing a positive jacket? No, no, thanks. Sure. I'll keep it on for a couple of videos. Oh, okay. I'm not really scared. So, what's, what's that over there? Well, that's just a picture. Yeah, I, I don't really like it. I want to have another haircut. Another haircut? Yeah. Why don't you just take it out? Take what out? Okay, so now on to titration, something you'll do a lot in AS Chemistry and A2 as well, things that do your reps. So what is it actually for, Wayne? Well, it's for acid and base reactions, and it's for determining the concentration or the moles of one of the unknowns. So the first step is to know your equations, and we, in a previous video we went through our acid-base reactions, but we'll go through them very briefly now. If we have... HCl. So we have an acid and a hydroxide goes to salt and water, and we have an acid and a oxide goes to H2O and the salt. As so H and water, I don't salt and water first. Then, and lastly, you have an acid and carbon carbonate, and it goes to um, salt, water, and carbon dioxide. If we just write this one up, um, we've gone through the rules briefly. This is one of the rules you have to know. It's mm. balanced, as you can see. Yeah. Now, if we say we're titrating this against this, the reason might be we want to work out the concentration of this. So if I, if I bought some of this, didn't know anything about it, didn't know how strong it was, I wanted to work out how concentrated it was, and if I could put it on my flowers, I'd do a titration. Yeah, that's what you do when you put something on your flowers. Can't trash Amazon. So, we're going to do titration now, aren't we? Yes. So firstly, let's draw up some things. Firstly, we're going to have, what's this called? This big, long thing that drips the stuff. And that's called a burette wing. And it has a twisty thing here so that you can stop it so it doesn't all just drip continuously. Turn it. Um, we have a clamp stand to hold this all in the air. Yeah. Clamp on this one there. Safety first. Absolutely. And we're going to drop it into a conical flask, which will have something of a known concentration in it. Yep. Say our uh, hydrochloric acid. Yep, because we don't know the concentration of this. So, in here, um, you have a known volume. Normally, these are 25 centimetres cubed flasks. Yeah. Um, and in there will be your hydrochloric acid. Now, you know the concentration of this. You'll know the volume of this because it's 25 centimetres cubed. So let's make up some, um, we're going to make up some values entirely. So volume, like I said, is normally 25 centimetres cubed. Concentration, say, 0.1 okay. moles per decimetres cubed. Then you're going to have in here your sodium hydroxide. Yeah, and you'll have it up, for example, full, have it at 50, so you're going to let some in and see what changes. But to know what changes, we're going to need some sort of indicator. We are, and there's three main types of indicators. They have different colour changes. Um, can you name any? I can. We've got phenolphthalein. Phenolphthalein. When it's in acid, it's clear. You can't see anything. So that'll be a, that'll be the one I would use here because yeah. the acid's in here. You put it in, it will be clear. And, there's a, and it, when it becomes neutral, it will be pale pink. Yep. So you'll see a slight change. The first tinge of pink that's in it would say that's the end point. You don't need to add any more of this. It is neutral. If you go overboard, it would be. Very pink, very pink. That's what colour it would be in your in your base. Yeah, that's when you've gone too far. But why is this why is this helpful? When we're dripping on thing to our fail, which is we haven't got a pink. No, but it's clear, so that's fine. Well, because you're going to measure the C and the V, you want to know the C up here. This this is your this is your unknown. Yeah, and when you, when you when it gets to the end point, when it will change to pale pink you'll have dropped a certain volume, and then you'll know the volume. So it might be, say, drops down to here, this many drips worth. And so your volume you'd measure wouldn't be 50 centimetres cubed, what you started with, it would be the difference, that's how much you've used to neutralise this. So then you can use your stoichiometry rules. Because you this is dealing with this getting to a neutral state. So when it's neutralised here, this equation applies, or can apply. Can apply. So um, say we've used this volume. Uh, 23.4 centimetres cubed, it's going to be fairly close to this, roughly. What should we always end with, with our um, volume amounts in a viewer at win? We should always end in a 5 or a naught. This will be divided up, you'll be able to see yeah, every, um, every 
0.5 of a centimetre cubed, you'll be able to see in here on the side as a reading. Then you can also judge if it's halfway through the two points. You don't know exactly what that is, but you can say it's going to be roughly 0.05 afterwards. Yeah, or if it's exactly on it, and you'll measure it from the meniscus. Well, the meniscus is the drop. If you notice, if you put things into a burette, it's not a perfectly straight line at the top. It sort of dips yeah, a little bit. Of, and you measure from the bottom of the dip, and in this example, probably say it's in between those two, if it was there. Just in case we're not being clear, let's do a really zoomed in example of just this, this bit here. This top bit where you're making your readings. You've got this beautiful meniscus, and you've got your readings on the side, which you can see. So if this was a reading, um, this was a reading. We're really zoomed in at this point. Yep. And this example, because it is just on our bottom reading, not between them, pretty much just on, we'd probably say that that is that value. But if it was more here, we'd say it would be 0 0.5. Yeah. Well, not 0 0.05. So in this case, say when you titrated it, the difference between the two was 23.4, and you reckoned as a 5 at the end, so it was sort okay. of in between the two lines. That would be your volume, and you're trying to work out concentration. We still don't have enough information here. We don't, we have a very handy equation. We didn't know it before, and it's n equals c times v. We've got to remember here, we always need to use our volumes in decimeters cubed. And the reason is because this is moles per decimeter cubed, not per centimeter cubed. So we're going to need to divide all of our de centimeter cubed values by a thousand. So moles here for the HCL is going to be 0 0.1 times that divided by 1000, which is 0 0.025. So moles here equals 0 0.0025. Yeah, that'd be the moles. Now we use our stoichiometry. We know that, that HCl to the NaOH, when it's been neutralised, is 1 to 1. We do, so that means it'll have the same amount of moles. It has the same amount of moles, we can then use the equation. So we divide the moles by the amount of volume. And that will equal the concentration, which is what you're trying to find out. Well, so 0 0.0025 divided by... 23.45, it's going to be quite a low concentration. 23.45 divided by 1,000. Ah, uh, yes. So it ends up being 0.1.07. We'll just call that 0 0.11. Yeah. So, we've done all the maths and stuff. But doing a titration, what have you got to be careful of? So, do you want to hold this for me because you've got to swirl it? Right. This is all coming out into 3D. Okay, so you've got, got to swirl it while you go in. And you've got to twist this so that it drops. You don't twist it, if you twist it vertically upwards, it'll just be a hole and yeah, it'll just spill it out. So, you can do you can do what some people do. You spin it all the way around, it'll do one drop, or you can make it so it just, just turns enough. I'm going to turn to it uh, about 30 degree, there you go, drop. Yeah, okay, that's drop. good. And you need to keep it swirling, because every time it hits, if you don't swirl, it will make a colour change, but only in that small area. If you swirl it, it will be mixing with the whole thing, and it will be a better way to check. So at the minute I'm adding this drop-wise, I'm going to stop for a second while we can take it out and have a look at it. Now, if we're using phenolphthalein, it's going to go to a pale pink, so it is. the for first a... tinge of pink will be the end point. It's good to look at a white tile in this way to find out. And we have a large white tile. We have, that's, that's the function of the board. We don't really use it for writing, just as a big white tile. So, here I think, I think, um... We've got a pale pink tinge, but yeah, just. Only just, that's pretty much just on. Often with titration, but always, it will happen on a drop. Yes. So normally you'll do one, where you're basically just finding out roughly where it is. So you do it quite quickly, and you go, okay, it's about there, but I've added too much. And then you'll, when you get near to there, you'll start doing it drop-wise, as Wayne did. And then you can make it on the drop. Then you need concordant results, so you get three results which are pretty much identical. So in this case, if we said that the volume here was 23.45, for your first attempt you might have added really quickly, you might have got, say, you might have got 20 and realised it's not done, keep going, 25, it's now done, it's going to yeah. be in between. So you st at 20, you have 20 quite quickly, and then from 20 you go drop-wise swirling all the time. Absolutely. And that's how you do a titration. Um, when you're adding things into the funnel, be careful to put that on the seat. You don't add it up here. No, you don't do it high level or below. People who are vertically challenged, like myself, put on a chair or something. So there is other indicators we should briefly mention. There is, not only feel failing, there is methyl orange, which is orange. Yeah, when it's at its end point. It's red in acid and yellow in your bases and alkalis. Yeah. And there's... Bromo, blue, 
Bromo something. Yeah. Was it? Bromo. This is one that we haven't Bromo ever Bromo used. Bromo. Yeah, we haven't used it, and it's not come up before. It hasn't. They're not. They're like Final Fantasy, Mythal, Orange, Zero, the favorites. They're favourites. There is Universal Indicator, which is probably used, but it's actually not that helpful. No, Universal Indicator. You've got a you've got a scale on the pH, so when it gets to the perfect green, you'd know it's neutral. And it's got all the variations of colours in between. You just look at a piece of paper and go, yeah, that's the same colour. Because There's it goes error. so often, it's, yeah, it's problems. So normally, phenolphthalein or methyl orange is the way forward. It is, it is the way forward. So that's right. titrations. That is titrations. And now for the last topic, well, for now. Redox and oxidation. So I need to just... Save you some money. Oh, I like it.